Hi friends, it's Lindsay from the Vlog Books for Christian Girls and welcome to this video where y'all see a side of my room y'all typically don't see. These are my bed bookshelves, meaning if you've seen my room tour video that I did in the old house, we're now in a new house. Well, we've been in this house for a bit, but I haven't filmed a room tour yet for this vi for this room. I plan to do that soon. I hope to do that soon. I've got to get a couple more things in order and figure out what to do with all the plants that are all over my room. But then other than that, we'll film a new room tour. But if you're familiar with my room's layout, if not, I'll link a couple videos up there for y'all to check out. But my bed, my mattress is on bookshelves. Yes, it's safe. There's, there's more to it than that, but that's the basic gist of it. So these bookshelves, y'all really never see. Like sometimes I'll show them on Instagram stories, but typically, Y'all just see my beautiful rainbow bookshelves, which is totally fine because they're beautiful and gorgeous. So, can't I can't blame myself for always filming in front of it because I love it. And this, while I have each one a little aesthetic, overall they aren't the prettiest. But that's okay. That's okay. If they're good books and I enjoy them, they get put on the rainbow shelves. So, that is the goal. That is the goal for these books and these books. So, let me just break it down and explain a little bit but I would love to know as you see any of these books if you're like that book's really good Lindsay you should read it please let me know let me know which ones I should push to the top of my TBR which ones I can kind of scooch to the bottom I would be really curious to know what y'all think I have a couple of these I hope to start soon but overall it's all pretty fair game so I would love to know so this top shelf is my Mysterious Men Society shelf I have read all these but I've read all these multiple times. I hope y'all can't see the stuff in the corner. Okay, my Mysterious Myth Society shelf. When I say I own five, six copies of the first book, I, I'm not kidding. I, I really do own that many copies. So this shelf is not part of the TBR. And then this shelf is like childhood favorites, classics. I would love to do a whole video in depth about these because like these are the ones that I've kept well, most of them are from my childhood. This series is not, but the rest of them I've enjoyed. A couple of them actually I haven't read in a long time. But other than that, that's that shelf. So there's those two shelves. We're not going to really discuss those. I have my books I've never read that are on my physical TBR right here. These you've probably seen in the gob of book hauls. This is the main books we'll be talking about. But then we'll also be talking about these books on this shelf and these with the exception of these, I've never, I haven't read all of these, but they're there for aesthetic reasons. Okay, we'll just ignore those for now. But all of these books, I've read once, most of them, and I just wanted to see, do I want to keep them? I want to reread, and do I want to keep them and put them on my beautiful rainbow shelves? Because I made kind of a whole series, video, of like video diaries, maybe like three, four videos about that I want to be more intentional with the books I own. Like I want to walk into my room and just look at my bookshelf and go like in a happy, content side. I don't want to look at my bookshelf and go, that book had that one content, that one had that, I didn't like that, that kind of thing. I just want to keep the books that I really, truly enjoy and that I want to keep. You know, I just, I want to be intentional. So these have been pulled probably over two years ago for me to find that out. And mind you, this was over a hundred books at one point. So it's down to quite a few less. I've added a couple more in the recent year, but I'm pretty proud that I'm down to only this many. So now I just have to get this many done and I'll be done with that challenge after like three years, but that's okay. Let's go into more detail and talk about the books. Hi, me. Quick disclaimer before I start showing y'all all these fun books. Um, I haven't read any of these on this shelf, so I don't know about the content. Obviously can't talk about the content of the books I don't know unless I look on Goodreads for reviews, which I typically do before I buy a book anyway. But I don't know the content in these books, so please don't take this as a Lindsay's stamp of approval, it's clean, because I don't know. Some of these might not be clean, so if you know, and if you know there's like a potential trigger that I've talked about that's in one of these books, please let me know. I really appreciate it. 
Okay, so disclaimer aside, let's get on with the books. So the books I've never read before, my physical TBR. First, I have a lot of pins, so we're just going to move those out of the way. And then I have a cute little panda mug that keeps loose change. So I organize my official TBR by genre because I'm such a mood reader. So they're by genre in kind of a way. Well, we'll explain. Okay, let's get on with it. Anna Green Gables by Ellen Montgomery. I tried attempting to read this book when I was in elementary school and I could not finish it. So I bought a new copy and I'm going to finally attempt to try to read it. Wish me luck. The Vanderbeekers Make a Wish by Karina Yan Glasser. This is book five in the Vanderbeeker series. I plan to get to this one within the next couple of months just because the sixth book is releasing. I talked about that a bit in my prior video, but yes, isn't it pretty? It's a secular middle grade and I just think it's such a fun series. I'm really looking forward to reading this fifth book. So that one will be getting done soon. Then it, there is A Test of Faith by Carol Cox. This is a mystery and the minister's wife. I've had this, this might be the one I've had the longest on my physical TBR, but it's just a cozy mystery. A stolen car crashes through the front window of the country diner. And I've never read any of the books in this series, but I've really liked this author's historical mysteries. So when I saw this at the bookstore for a good price, I went ahead and grabbed it. And it's been sitting on my TBR since. Also in the mystery genre, we have River of Life by Kathleen Yabarbo, which is book two, I believe, in The Secrets of the Wayfarer Inn. Wayfarers. Wayfarers Inn. It's a series I've just recently started. It's a guidepost mystery series. It's set during the 4th of July, so I think I'll probably read it around the 4th of July. Present Danger by Elizabeth Goddard, which is Rocky Mountain Courage series book one. I don't honestly remember too much about it. Former FBI special agent, U.S. Forest Service special agent. I enjoy this genre. I've never read anything by this author. I've heard good things. So I just would like to get started. I try to read at least one suspense book a month. So I'll probably get to this one before the end of the year is my hope. Maybe if I'm in the mood for it. Also a new author to me is Living Lies by Natalie Walters. This is book one in the Harvard Secrets series. I've heard a lot of good things about this author's new series and I really want to check them out. But I saw this one on Book Outlet so I went ahead and grabbed it. And yes. Then we have Point and Shoot by Allison Stone. This one I've had on my TBR for a long time, but I finally got a copy of it off of Thrift Books and a recent book haul. And this one has gotten me really interested because it has to do with a ballet studio and it just seems really interesting in the suspense side when the main girl is not in the like criminal justice field she wanted to be but she decided to take over her family's dance studio and now an instructor has been killed and it looks suspicious and it just sounds really interesting and also I just I love the title as a photographer I thought it was very clever but then just you know point shoes ballet it was cute I thought that was just it got me very intrigued a plus title Unknown Threat by Lynn H. Blackburn this is book one in the Defend and Protect series U.S. Special, U.S. Secret Service Special Agent. Blah, 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 that's a mouth. That's that's just a lot to say, but it just sounds interesting. I've never read anything by this author. Maybe I've read a novella or two. I don't remember, but the cover had me really intrigued. Yes, yeah, so as you can tell, I'm trying out new sus Christian suspense authors with these four. I really hope I enjoy at least one of them where I can check out the author's other books. Then we have Nightfall by Nancy Mel. This book, okay, so number one, it's book number one in the Quantico files. I have, I have no idea how you pronounce that, but it sounds interesting, it, but it also sounds pretty creepy. So I think I'm gonna have to really be in the mood for this, but it's got to do with the FBI. There's kidnappings or all kinds of different things, deadly virus that the sam deadly virus that the killer intends to spread. Um, I don't know. It looks 
it looks really suspenseful and if I'm in the mood for that I'll definitely pick up this book. Then we have Bound by Guilt by CJ Darlington and I can't recall if this is what genre this is considered. Foster children fiction, theft fiction. Um, so I assume it's contemporary. I have adored this author's other series, Jupiter Winds and Jupiter Storm. I love it. So when I saw this a long time ago on a bargain book display, I was like, hey, let me get this. This might be interesting. I think it's actually book two. I don't even think it's the first book, but this one sounded more interesting to me. Oh, this sounds actually really interesting. How come I've pushed this off so much? Roxy Gold is a throwaway, shuttled from one foster home to another for most of her life. She longs for a family and will do anything to fit in, even if it's against the law. Soon she's traveling the country, stealing rare books from unsuspecting bookstores until the first edition of The Great Gatsby catches up with her. Police officer Abby Donston has seen the worst in society and not just at work. The job she once loved has become a chore and the world isn't any safer and there's no joy in her life. One fateful night, a man's innocent blood changes both Roxy and Abby's lives forever. One searches for justice, the other finds herself on the run. Will the power of forgiveness set them free or will they both remain bound by guilt? Well, wow, that actually sounds... Why have I... I don't know why I haven't read this sooner because that sounds really interesting it sounds like the no romance okay we might be pushing this one up that sounds really interesting I also think it's really cool that the spine looks like an old book I think that's really cool isn't that doesn't that look neat so okay yeah we might be going with this one sooner than I think man this is just gonna make me want to like read all of them soon and I can't do that hmm bummer moving on before I Called You Mine by Nicole Des Desi. I'm not sure how to pronounce the author's last name. All I really know about this book is it has to do with adoption. And that is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. I've seen different people just rave about this book. So I wanted to try it out. I assume it has to do with China adoption because of the red thread and the cherry blossoms. But maybe not. I, I don't remember. It just says international adoption and it's just looks really interesting I'm, I'm really excited to read this one a chance book of mine that i bought is love and other mistakes by jessica kate um it, it was a moment of weakness that i bought this book if we're being frankly honest i don't know i've i've had a lot of misses lately with thomas nelson but I saw that it was clean on the other Goodreads reviews, so I thought I would try it out. I don't know. It doesn't really look like my cup of tea, per se. Like, it looks very, like, rom-com-ish, which is my cup of tea, actually, but I don't know. Let me know. If y'all read this book and did you enjoy it, was it better than you were expecting? Because I gotta be honest, it's, it's low on my totem pole. Moving into historical dual time period is Echoes Among the Stones by Jamie Jo Wright. And then also The Curse of Misty Wayfair by Jamie Jo Wright. I have not read a book by this author yet. I've heard good things. I've also heard that it's typically on the creepier side. And I don't know about that. But it's a historical dual time period. I want to at least try it out. And these were the two books I saw friends on Goodreads review and talk about the content. That I was like, hey, I, I could potentially enjoy that one. So I bought these two. I do love the spines of her books though. I've seen different pictures and a lot of them like just line up pretty like this and I think that's really nice. Then we have A Tapestry of Light by Kimberly Duffy. This is set in the 1880s and all I really know about it besides it has a gorgeous cover and gorgeous spine is that it is kind of where the main girl is torn between her home in India and I believe her home in the UK. She's British, but living in India, I don't really know too much, but I really got excited to see a book, a historical Christian fiction book, where it's not set in the States or Europe, it's set elsewhere. So it had me really intrigued. It is a really thick book, though, so I'm a little hesitant to get into this one anytime soon, but if y'all have heard a lot of good things about it, let me know. It's just a gorgeous cover, though. You probably are noticing a lot of these are ones I recently hauled in my book outlet haul. That's because I haven't read any of those yet. It's okay though. That was just, that was not that long ago. So that's okay. By October, I hope I have a few of these knocked out. 
Then we have The Bridge to Bell Island by Julie Klassen. This is probably going to be the book outlet or their book I read probably first because it has me really intrigued and I really enjoy Regency books. This one though has to do with a murder mystery in a Regency time period and I just, that's that sounds right up my alley so I'm excited to get to it. Isn't that just so pretty? Oh, so pretty. I may also get to this one though before that one. I don't know which because I have to read book two but this is book three in the Hope and Glory series. It is The Prince of Spies by Elizabeth Camden. I have raved and just adored the first book, The Spice King, which I also hauled in that book outlet video but I've read that one so it's not on the shelf. Go me. And this is the third book. It's about the younger brother who got arrested for... Oh, is that a spoiler? If it's not a spoiler, I'll just say it and leave it in. But if it is a spoiler, you're just going to hear nothing and just my lips moving. How's that? There we go. So the younger brother was arrested for treason, and this is his story and all about that. So I'm really excited to read this one. I haven't read the second book yet, so I need to read that one first. I like reading them in order because of, you know, spoilers and whatnot. But yes, I these are probably the two I'll be getting to pretty quick. The Lines Between Us by Amy Lynn Green. This is a World War II book. It just sounds interesting. I enjoyed the author's first World War II book, so I thought I would try it this one. Her new one, though, looks really interesting, so I'm really excited about this one. But yes, this one looks interesting, too. Okay, I just have to say, it's really funny. I clean all my books with lemon essential oil after I get them, and as I'm messing with them, I'm just smelling lemon essential oil, which is a very pleasant, very summery scent, so, you know, it's nice. Then moving into the YA fantasy elements, we have Heart of a Royal by Hannah Curry, I believe is how you pronounce the author's last name. This is a young adult royalty, obviously, story, and you just put royalty in a contemporary YA? Sign me up, I want to know more. So I bought this book a while back and I still haven't read it, but I'm just saving it for when I'm like truly in the mood for a good royalty story. This series has also continued, I think, there's, I think, three or four books in this series, maybe three, and so if I enjoy this one, I'll definitely check out those other ones. But yes, royalty, why? It looks interesting. I'd love to know if y'all have read this one. My camera keeps going back and forth focusing, so forgive it. It wants to focus on all the books, not just one book, but we'll try. Then we have Hearing Lies by Olivia Smith. I really enjoyed the first book of this duology, which was Seeing Voices, and so I ordered this one, and I just haven't gotten to it yet. I really, really want to get to this one soon, because just a lot of things have changed, apparently. She goes back to the town that her family stayed at for a bit, and somebody's keeping a secret, and it just, I don't know, it just looks interesting. I, again, contemporary YA, my genre. Okay, and then I have this little book, and I gotta be honest, I don't know why I just have it randomly here, but it's Cards of Kindness for Courageous Girls. Um, really cute, just little, like, sweet cards. It's really sweet. I just haven't read it fully. I'd like to review it. It's a little smaller than I typically review, but it's just really neat to like, you can tear it out and share it with someone. So I just, I think that's really neat. I might honestly pass this along to someone who works with like girls ages 9 to 12 because I think that would be really neat for them. But yeah, it's really cute. I've looked through it, but I haven't read it, read it yet. Moving into my fantasy section. Don't be shocked. Don't, don't, are you okay? I know, Lindsay, talking about fantasy. What does the world come to? I know. It's okay. So, here are these books. And I've actually been reading one a month so far for this year. Go me. It's May. I haven't read May's yet, so I'll probably read one of these. So let me know which one. Which one should I read for May? I mean, I'll probably just read what I'm in the mood for, but y'all are welcome to give me suggestions and vote on which one of these, what is it, six? Yeah, which one of these six should I read for May? I knocked off one last month. I had the Emerald Illusion was on my TBR shelf here, and I knocked that one off last month, so yay me. The first book is Apprentice by Christian Young. Kristen Young, forgive me. And this is book one in the Collective Underground series. From my understanding, this is a dystopian 
series, which I love dystopian and I am sad we don't see much of them published anymore. A princess flick remembers everything except the first five years of her life. For, and for as long as she can remember, Flick has always wanted to enter the elite academy, home to the brightest, best, and most loyal members of the Love Collective government. Interesting. Flick's uncanny memory might get her there too, even if it's the very thing that marks her as a freak. But frightening hallucinations start intruding into her days and threaten to bring down all she has worked so hard to accomplish. Why is she being hijacked by a stranger's nightmare over and over again? Moving to the Elite Academy could give Flick the future she's always wanted, but her search for truth may lead her into a danger she cannot escape. Sounds interesting. I'm intrigued. Obviously, I bought the book, but I believe there is, is a trilogy, and the third book just released or will be releasing soon. Looks interesting. <laughs> Obviously, these all looked interesting, Lindsay. I bought them all. My poor bank account. It's okay. Moving on, Tainted by Morgan L. Bussey, Bussey, but no, she said it was like fussy, so fussy, bussy, bussy, right? Is, did, did I get that right? I hope I got that right. And this is a steampunk book. This is the first book in a duology called The Soul Chronicles. I read her most recent, The Secrets in the Mist, and I enjoyed that one. I thought it was interesting. I definitely plan to read the second book when it releases. I believe that's in the summer, but I also own this book, and... The whole steampunk idea is really interesting to me. That's all I really need to know. I'm debating though, do I want to read this book now, read the sequel, and then I'll have the next one? Or should I finish out the other series that's currently being published, The Secrets in the Mist, and then Blood Something Something Blood? I, secrets of the Blood, Blood of Secrets, some, I don't remember, I'll put the, the cover here. And so do I want to finish that series and then read this one? Or do I want to read this one, the second one, and then go there? Decisions, y'all, decisions. Then there is The Storyteller's Daughter by Victoria McCombs. This is a fairy tale retelling. Yeah, Rumpsel's still, Rumpsel, I don't Rump, Stilchkin, still. Y'all know who I mean, right? Okay. So I have only read one book by this author before, and it wasn't my favorite, to put it one way. So I thought I would still give this one a try, though. The cover is really neat. The fairy tale retelling, I've heard a couple friends rave about it. So we'll see. Another dystopian book is The Messengers Discovered by Lisa M. Clark. Um, haven't really seen anything about this book until I saw it on Paperback Swap recently, and I was like, oh hey, it's a Christian dystopian series that I have, I've never heard about, so I wanted to try it. Uh, Concordia actually published one of my favorite books of all time, The Story People. Just fun fact there, that has nothing to do with this book, and they're totally separate genres, but just, you know, fun fact. So, 15-year-old Simon Clay is told everything he needs to know by the government, except what really happened to his mom, and why no one can go out at night, and why the darkness is so dangerous. By day, Simon pushes against every boundary there is, and by night, secret visitors and hidden messages make him question everything his life entails. There's a truth out there to be discovered, a truth the government will stop at nothing to stamp out. Join Simon and the messengers as they risk their lives to protect it. Dystopian, it gives me a little bit of the... The Swipe series by Evan Eng Engler. Engler. It reminds me a little bit of that just from the back cover, but yeah, it'll either be a hit or it'll be a miss. We'll find, we'll find out. And then the book that will probably win y'all's suggestions <laughs> of me to read here in May is Dust by Kara Swanson. I know I still haven't read it. Obviously I haven't read the second book that released a bit ago either, but it is a Peter Pan influenced. It's not a retelling, I've learned. It's not a retelling, but it's it has Peter Pan, and it's a little darker than people expected is what I heard, but like that, it looks really interesting. The cover is gorgeous. I definitely plan to get to it, but when will I get to it is the question. Mm, just a gorgeous cover. And then the last book on this physical TVR is The Hadley Academy for the Improbably Gifted by Connor Grinham. This is a middle grade book, and I think the title really gives you everything you really need to know about 
I kind of read the first chapter and it sounded interesting and it was only like three dollars at a bookstore so I was like hey I'll go ahead and get it it's got a cool map maps why not y'all like yeah maps are cool so Ta da there we go <laughs> Okay, so these are the books on my physical TBR that I haven't read yet. So, what do we think? Should I get to them soon? I think I'll just quickly run through the other ones and then we'll chat a little bit. Okay, so just real quick, gonna run through these. We have Honor by Lynn Colt, Pots and Pans by Kelly Aline Hake, Threads of Hope by Andrea Boschar, The Road to Testament by Eva Marie Everson, Price to Move, A Steal of a Deal, and A Cut Above, all by Ginny Alkeen. Rise and Shine by Sandra D. Bricker. Waking Beauty by Sarah E. Morden. Morin? Which is very much a Sleeping Beauty retelling that I read once and I don't remember any opinion on it at all, so I need to reread it. The Sound of Diamonds and The Sound of Emeralds by R Rochelle... Rachel... Raya? Ra Rochelle Raya. Maybe? I apologize. That's book one and three in this series, and I enjoyed these when I read them, and so I found them at a good price, so I bought them, but I'd like to reread them. Victoria Grace, The Jerk Face by S.E. Clancy. Also enjoyed this contemporary YA, but I wanted to reread it before I put it on my shelf again. In Between by Jenny B. Jones, and then I'll Be Yours by Jenny B. Jones. Holly's Heart Collection 1, which I have almost finished, and then Holly Heart, Holly's Heart Collection 2, and three, which I've never read two and three, but I'll probably do like one a month for like the next foreseeable future. So those will happen eventually. Trading Secrets by Melody Carlson and then My Amish Boyfriend by Melody Carlson, both contemporary YA that has to do with the Amish. Just As, Meant to Be, Falling Up, and That Was Then, all by Melody Carlson. And these are all four books in the Kim series of the Diary of a Teenage Girl series. I might end up just reading the first book, but I don't know. It has to deal with adoption. The main girl was adopted, so I might read the whole series, but I don't know yet. Hi, Daisy. I know, we're almost done. We're almost done. Don't breathe in my face. I love you. <laughs> and then we have A Not-So-Simple Life, It's a Green Thing, and What Matters Most, which is the, all three books in the Maya series by Melody Carlson. We have a beagle joining us. Okay. Okay, friends, that is all the books on my physical TBR. I mean, that's not too many. I used to have a ton more books on my physical TBR. If y'all saw me do the intimidating TBR challenge years ago, you know, like that was like half a big bookshelf full of books I wanted to read. They have been whittled down over the years and I am down to these. So under 60 books, I think. So I, I'm, I'm pretty satisfied by that. I'd have to count. I'll put the official number for each shelf here. Not too shabby in my opinion. And okay, now I'm out of breath. I've talked a lot. I will see y'all next time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, I would love to know if you've read any of these. Were they really good? Were they lackluster? Like, let me know. Share your opinions down below. I would love to know which ones I ought to get to first. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Lindsay from the blog Books for Christian Girls at blogspot.com. We're in 2022. There is a new review every Monday and Friday. I try to post a new video on this channel every other week sometimes, and I'm on Instagram somewhat randomly, but I will see y'all later. Bye!